Hey guys, welcome back. It's Biggs. Now today, you guys remember a week or so ago, I was out in the woods. We filmed that video on that incredibly hot day. And we were talking about the concept of doing isopods naturally. Well, today's the day. Today's the day I've got to get some of these vivariums set up. And what I mean by vivariums is the first isopod that we're going to try naturally. We're going to set it up a little bit different than anything we've ever done before. So let's take a look. Now before we even get further on this, I've got to give a shout out. Now there's a gentleman by the name of Jeremiah Toole in Ontario, Canada. And honestly, I've got to give most of the credit to that individual. That individual has a mind that works similar to mine and he loves exploring and he loves looking a little bit deeper. And I think honestly, as I mentioned in those videos, can we do it better? which is where it all started. I actually mentioned this individual and I actually talked about his setup. And that's kind of along the lines of where we're gonna to go today. I actually have, do you guys remember those two big vivariums that were below the 160 gallon tank, which is literally right in front of me? Remember they were saved for kind of another project down the road? Well, we're gonna be using one, maybe two of them. I don't know yet. I'm not really certain which, which one I wanna do. I have a 36 inch by 18 by 12 and I have a 24 inch by 18 by 12 high. And the reason being is they were originally intended for certain types of lizards and stuff that I wanted to work with with breeding projects, but with the pandemic, access to some of these animals has just been borderline impossible. So, <coughs> excuse me, we've put that kind of on the back burner and I think we want to do something different with it. So, as I mentioned in that video, we spent all that time in the woods looking for certain products really taking a closer look at the forest floor, understanding the dynamics of the microfauna, how now everything works together, be it the plants uh, and the microorganisms and the inverts and stuff like that, that work to break down all those byproducts and bring it back to nature. And that's what we want to accomplish in this type of vivarium. The pieces that I want to use, I want to keep alive as best as I can. So I've got different types of lichens, and mosses, and I'm soaking them. And the reason for soaking them is this will keep them alive, but it might drown off or kill off any of the pathogens, things such as centipedes and things that I definitely do not want to add to the culture. But it'll still maintain the live biologicals. Nice, beautiful, natural mosses. So we'll be able to, that way we'll be able to inoculate the culture naturally with all that microfauna and living bacteria and so forth, and still provide a food source for all these animals. This will jumpstart the culture a lot quicker than any other way of doing it. We've got all sorts of different types of mosses and whatnots. So it's been soaking for over a day now. I come out here periodically and just kind of stir it up a little bit to make sure that everything gets saturated. And that way we remove any products. And then some of the other products for say, like I have a lot of the other pieces of rotting wood and if they didn't have any real lot of life, say in the form of lichens or mosses on the outside and they were just rotting wood, well what I've done with those is I've actually baked those in the oven. And the reason I've baked those in the oven is that if, that way if things like carpenter ants or anything like that, ants can be very, very detrimental, not to necessarily an isopod culture, but they could be extremely detrimental and life-threatening to say something like my tarantulas. And you can see, there's been ants in here already. You can see them on this piece. So those are things that we definitely do not want to introduce, if at all possible. And here's those products that have been baked at 350 for about 15, 20 minutes, so to speak. And basically, these ones just came out, so they're, they're really, really hot. They've killed all the pathogens and anything that may be with inside, but by using that natural mosses and stuff, and the, and the products that are outside in the tub, we're gonna kill off the bad stuff, but we'll be able to re-inoculate all the good stuff. But these products here, whether I use them as actual decorative product on its own, like this, or they could easily just be crumbled up quickly because they are rotten, they could be crumbled up quickly and become a component within the substrate. So all these extra components, this is all the stuff that was loose at the bottom of the bag, just crumbly, spongy, rotten wood, the little extra little pieces of moss and whatnot, 
I'm going to bake this the same way as I was baking those larger pieces. This won't contain any life anymore, but it'll become essential components for a really well-rounded substrate mix and a jump start for the culture. Now granted, this is all pretty risky, me being in the wife's kitchen without a permission slip. It got revoked a few videos back, so I'm doing it while she's at work. She'll never find out. Nah. <laughs> All right, well, here's some of the building blocks of that new substrate mix that we've been talking about, trying to go a bit more natural. So I've still gone with, this is like a, a worm casting uh, or very, very heavy, rich, humus-based organic uh, topsoil. Uh, you know, you don't want just a black earth. I've got some peat moss in here. I might have core in here. I've got lots of leaf litter, which hasn't been all broken up into in component and mixed in. This is all just lump charcoal that I've pulverized. Uh, you can go ahead and buy any type of uh, good quality charcoal and add it in. It's good for sweetening the mix and taking impurities out. And then the next component, that there's lots of it in already, is things like this. These are all these natural mosses and rotting woods and stuff like that. These are things that I've already cleaned. I don't really know. Sorry, I haven't cleaned them, but I've basically what I've done is I've baked them. These are not the live ones that we're going to be talking about afterwards when we set it up. But these are ones that I've basically baked and they've just removed all the possible introduction of pathogens to the mix and then these we're just going to break down and this is probably the most important component of it things like lichens and so forth i have lots of live ones they're still outside soaking and they will be a component of when we go and set the vivarium up but i think all these things being put into that mix are going to be an integral part of it so we're just going to add a whole pile of you know pieces of rotten wood and moss We're going to add all these components together. Now, I literally have an entire box of this stuff that's already been processed, and that's going to be all added to this, this mix. So when we traditionally make our isopod mixes, we've been using things like fir bark and uh, cocoa chips, like cocoa chunks, and breaking up things like that. And those are things that are components that are basically there to aerate the mix a little bit and provide a bit more substance. That's where the charcoal comes in, the natural charcoal, and the rotting wood products. Breaking this up, I'm not trying to break this down to a powder, but if I break that down into kind of chunks, that'll provide the exact same kind of components and the breathing room for that, uh, that media. Some products, I'm not trying to make anything fancy. I'm just breaking it down a little bit, and these are all gonna be components that are gonna be mixed into that substrate. These things just, you know, nice little chunk of rotten wood, as you can see renders very quickly into components for the mix. I'm really liking the look of this. I think this is going to look awesome. I think it's going to perform exceptionally well. So what this moss, all these pieces of moss, the live moss that we're going to be adding, even these things, these will basically be replacements for the things that we often use as long fibered sphagnum moss that we've always used in our substrates such as this. This still works exceptionally well and honestly if you're trying to breed isopods on a very large scale where you can see them and access them real easily and monitor things, setting them up in more of that kind of sterile kind of Rubbermaid tub with the very basic components, if it's working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of thing, and it might probably provide better results for you. That's not my goal. My goal is to reproduce nature as best as I can and let the animals take care, but also in a setting where I can really truly enjoy them and maybe witness behaviors that I didn't see before.